In the, in the second chapter of the book of Acts, as we go to Acts, the second chapter, reading particularly verses 1 through 4, Acts chapter number 2, verses 1 through 4, Lord, do it in Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter number 2, beginning at verse number 1, the writer declares that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. That's significant. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I want to look particularly at verse number one is where we're going to find our thought for our conversation here today. Amen. Chapter two, verse one says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I hope you arrive with me this morning. I want to speak to us and talk to us from this subject of partial Pentecost. Partial Pentecost. Lord, do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Partial Pentecost. Acts chapter number 2. Amen. If you are a believer, amen, today is a day in which we... As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and in being the church of Jesus Christ, we celebrate uh, and commemorate this phenomenon, this miracle uh, that the world experienced, amen, in Acts chapter 2, as we it is called, amen, the day of Pentecost. And as we begin to consider this, we find and we understand that uh, this uh, event took place following uh, Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. If we were to turn over to the book of John or Luke and even into any of the other Gospels, we would find out there that Jesus, after having been crucified and risen from the dead, the Bible declares, according to Acts chapter 1 verse 3, that Jesus went about for 40 days, amen, showing himself alive, the Bible declares, by many infallible proof. In other words, it was undeniable that Jesus had risen from the dead. And I know that there are some people perhaps today that may not believe, man, that Jesus has risen from the dead. Man, it may seem to be strange or unbelievable that a man could have suffered, man, all Bible records that Jesus suffered and yet and still not only was he put into a grave or into a tomb but the Bible declares that this same Jesus has risen and is now Lord and Christ. Uh, but I came to tell you today that he is risen and I know that it is not Easter or Resurrection Sunday perhaps that we're amen, celebrating today. We're celebrating Pentecost but I want us to understand amen that Pentecost is what it is because Jesus got up out of the grave. He is risen. Amen. And so the Bible declares in Acts chapter number 1 verse number 3 that he spends 40 days uh, speaking and ministering to his disciples. And the Bible declares chapter 1 verse number 4. Amen. It declares that being assembled together with them. The Bible declares that Jesus commanded them that they should wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. He says, as you have heard of me. In other words, Jesus, amen, before he leaves the scene and is received up, amen, into a cloud, the Bible declares that he instructs his disciples that they are to go to Jerusalem or rather to stay in Jerusalem and to wait there. That's where Man, we get that word tarry, it means to wait in the soul. It says, I want you to tarry there. I want you to wait in Jerusalem because that is a promise that the Father is going to send because he's already told his disciples, even as he was walking with them, he says, I've already prayed to the Father. The Father is going to send you another one. He's going to send you a comforter. Man, and that comforter, he says, is coming in my name. And when he, the spirit of truth, he declares, has come, he will lead you and guide you into all 
truth. In other words, Jesus is encouraging his disciples. He's walking with them on the road because he realizes that his time of departure is at hand. And because, man, he's about to be received out of the world, he does not want them to be discouraged at his absence, but to understand, amen, that the Father is going to send one that is not only that will walk with them, that will, but he will rather he'll be on the inside of them. And I came to tell somebody this morning, amen, that the Holy Ghost is real. Amen. There may be many that may not believe that the Holy Ghost is real, but the Holy Ghost is real. And I come to tell you, you can't make me doubt it because I know too much about it. You're a little bit too late to be able to convince me that the Holy Ghost is not real because I am a recipient. I can't get no help out there, but I wish somebody would just put in the comment section, I am a recipient. I, I have received the Holy Ghost just like the Bible said. I can hear my dear sister, amen, first lady, she says, I'm saved and I'm paper Bible saved. In other words, amen, I'm saved just like the Bible said. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Bible, the Bible declares it now, Jesus having told them to stay and to tarry in Jerusalem. Verse number six declares that when they therefore had come together. Amen. I want us to, I want us to pause and I want us to consider the reality that I believe that it was a great, amen, uh, something on Jesus' mind. It was a great concern in the mind of Jesus that his church would be and remain unified. I know where I'm going this morning. I want y'all to just ride with me for a moment. I believe it was great in the mind of Christ, amen, and a great concern, amen, that the body of Christ would remain united. And perhaps we could turn over to John chapter number 7, and it is there in John chapter number 17, rather, where we see that Jesus now is praying his last prayer before he's going to be crucified. And the Bible declares that it is the focus of Jesus' prayer here that he's praying for the unity of the believers that will remain in the world. Now, I hope y'all will just let me be myself here this morning. Want us to understand that in the midst of all of the degradation, amen, and the divisiveness that the enemy has unleashed on our world, amen, and is even trying to assault against the church so that the church of the living God is no longer the unified body, the body of Christ. I came to tell somebody that it is time for the church of the living God, amen, to be one. There must be a sense of synergy if we're going to be able to accomplish what it is that Jesus has empowered us to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says now in verse number six that they continue together. And the Bible declares in verse number eight of Acts chapter number one. He says, but ye shall receive power. He says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I came to tell somebody that all the world needs right now. They need a good healthy dose of the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't want to tell the truth now. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, you might have come in one way. But when you get the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God residing in your life. Amen. You don't think the same way that you used to think. You don't love the same way that you used to love. For Jesus declares that when the Holy Ghost comes into your life, it gives you power. I wish somebody would just put that in the comments, power. Because we're in a time now where a lot of folk are feeling powerless. We're in a time now where a lot of folk are feeling as if we are victims of society. But I came to tell somebody this morning that greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that is in the world. And because Jesus is on the inside of me, I am more than a conqueror. Well, he declared in Acts chapter number one, verse number eight, that after the Holy Ghost comes, then we shall have power. 
Jesus says, now when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to get power to do work. It's not just power to shout. Thank you, Lord. It's not just power to shout and to feel good, but it's power to accomplish the divine will of God and the will of God here. Jesus said, when this power comes, then you're going to be a witness, which tells me that if you got the Holy Ghost, just like the Bible said, you can't shut your mouth when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for you. It'll make you open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. I know it's crazy right now on the outside, but I got a peace that surpasses all understanding. Since Jesus has come into my life, well, well, he began to declare that when the Holy Ghost comes, you're going to receive power. And the Bible declares that when Jesus finishes talking, thank you, Lord, when Jesus finishes talking, the Bible declares that he's received out of their sight. Well, the boys go back just like Jesus said, but they don't go church, y'all. I just need to talk to somebody right now that's a little uneasy because you thought we would be back in the church by now. Uh, but the Bible declares that when they stayed in Jerusalem, that they didn't go to the church house, but they went to the upper room or an upper chamber in a home, y'all. I'm trying to tell somebody there's no distance to the that can limit uh, the outpouring of God's spirit in your life. Uh, you don't have to be relegated to a sanctuary uh, for God to visit your life. Uh, but if you just find a place uh, where you get your mind on Jesus, uh, Lord, feel somebody with the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you get your mind on Jesus, uh, my God, that power uh, that the Father has promised, uh, it'll come into your home life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, he began to declare in verse number 14. I'm almost there. In verse number 14, he says, and they continued with one accord in prayer and in supplication. In other words, he was stressing the importance of unity. That's what's going on in the world right now. Thank you, Lord. My God, unity is under attack. Lord, have mercy. Nobody sees us as one. As a human race, I'm on jumps and I'm here today. Nobody sees us. My God, as a unified body. But the Bible declares that by one blood has it made all mankind. Lord, have mercy. And the Lord begin to speak to my heart. I ain't going to be long, y'all. The Lord began to speak to my heart this morning. And he said these words to me. He said, son, it's undeniable that y'all have the tongue. He said, but you still don't have unity. So if you got the tongue, but you don't have unity, you have you are experiencing It's an essential element of Pentecost that there must be unity. And I came to tell somebody that just because we speak in tongues, that doesn't slowly make us Pentecostal. Because the Bible declares when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all. speak in my spirit. He says, son, remember what the apostle Paul told you. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. He says, if I have the ability, my God, to speak, hallelujah, with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels, if I understand all mystery, if I have all faith so that I'm able to move a mountain, but I don't have love, it profit me nothing. I came to tell the church of God that's gathered around the YouTube, the church of God that's gathered around the tablet and the telephone, that as we posture ourselves to celebrate this thing called My God, and we are preoccupied now with making sure that each one speaks in tongues. But I believe God's got a problem with us speaking in tongues. And then when we leave the sanctuary, we don't speak up against injustice. I know you thought I was going to come to shout today. I came to get in the church's business. Lord, have mercy. And it's rudimentary, it's traditional for us to gather on this day of Pentecost to celebrate our apostolic roots and to celebrate, my God, this phenomenal experience. But I came to tell somebody, it's Pentecost. My God is what we acknowledge as being the birth of the church. Then we must understand that no baby has been born mature. Lord have mercy. So we're celebrating the experience, hallelujah, my God, of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But we're lacking maturity. Ah, yes, God. For we're not stick in maturity if we're still divisive in our behavior. Y'all don't want me to tell the truth. Yes, Lord, we're still in our infancy. If we troll it on Facebook, yes, Lord, thank you. We're speaking in tongues when we're together. But when we get out of church, we're trolling on Facebook, critiquing what everybody else is doing. And we're talking about Pentecost at Fully Yes, Lord, we're concerned speak in tongues together when we assemble in the congregation but when we leave and our brothers and our sisters is going through in life we don't care to speak up about injustice I came to make the devil mad yes Lord I'm talking about real Pentecost it was yes God it was a hallmark of the early church that they sold everything that they had and gave it unto the apostle so that there was no need and no lack that everybody could have all things common yes lord it was a sign of the early church oh yes lord i hear you it was a sign of the early church that they were concerned about the needs of their brothers and their sisters and i didn't mount this sacred desk this morning to take some political social stand but i did come to tell every pentecostal out there that if we're going to have a real pentecostal experience then we got to really unify talking about wearing the same thing dresses down to here and up to there black suit black black tie and white shirt but i'm talking about holiness unto the lord i'm talking about real unification for i hear paul declare lord have mercy that we are to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace we got to unify now Lord Jesus and I can hear the Lord now sing as Paul began to declare unto 
know we all come uh, unto the unity of the faith uh, and unto the knowledge of the Son of God, uh, unto the, the stature uh, and to the fullness of the stature, uh, my God of Christ. Uh, in other words, Paul said, uh, we're not where we need to be uh, until the church can grow up in unity. Uh, and I hear the Lord sing. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord saying, you can converge. Yes, Lord. You can converge on one arena and still be skeptical of your brother. That's not Pentecost. Ah, yes, Lord. He says, if you lack the integrity to stand up against injustice, no Super. 
proceed simply speaking in tongues, but not speaking to our neighbor. It's time for us to unify. And how will we unify? I heard the word of the Lord as he began to declare.
When the day of Pentecost fully comes, it came in their day fulfilling the purpose for which God was sending them to Jerusalem. He said, go to Jerusalem not just for the feast, but go to Jerusalem for the power. And if you stay there for the purpose for which I'm sending you, the power But they already knew accustomed to, according to Jewish customs, they didn't eat a drink prior to 9 a.m. during the feast. So they couldn't have been drinking anything. They said, this got to be some new wine that they've been sipping on. But I came, I came to tell somebody that there's something that God wants to pour out in your life that's not like anything else you've ever experienced before in your life. God wants to pour out something in your life that will rush tradition out of your mind. God wants to put something in your life that will push out every God wants to put something in your life that will change you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Peter said they're not drunk as ye suppose. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. For God has declared that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit, brothers and sisters. I come to declare to you, I don't know which day it is, but I believe that we are in the last of the last days. And if we
Amen. God bless you. Amen.